dear students uh, welcome to experimental techniques and material characterizations uh, lecture number 13 i am dr parvez ahmed uh, in this lecture uh, we will start discussions on the transmission electron microscopy uh, that in short we call tam uh, this is part first uh, in this section uh, we will deal with the uh, introductions of different parts and functions of transmission electron uh, microscope so let's proceed towards uh, today's lecture uh, that is uh, introductions to transmission electron uh, microscopy so the first questions that uh, we have whenever we heard uh, about transmission electron microscopy uh, so everybody has this question that what is the mean or what sort of technique is this so transmission electron microscopy uh, that in short we call tem is a technique for achieving high resolution image uh, or images or micrograph of thin uh, specimen. I mean, this is a sort of technique with the help of which we can get an uh, internal view of very small object. So how small that should be, so that uh, we will discuss later on in this lecture. I mean, uh, we can get even the atomic scale uh, images uh, with the help of this sort of microscopy. So uh, what we have in this sort of the technique, uh, so in this technique we have a beam of high energy electrons uh, that uh, passes through the specimen and is then focused to form uh, an image. So the resolution of the term uh, is greater than that of the scanning electron microscope uh, that we have already discussed in the uh, first uh, section, that is uh, lecture number first to lecture number eight. And is typically of the order of 0 0.2 nanometer. I mean, with the help of this uh, spectroscopy, I mean, we can even go up to the atomic scales. Uh, that is uh, what actually mean by uh, to, uh, 0 0.2 nanometer. So this compares with approximately two nanometers for the same and around uh, 0.2 micrometers uh, for the conventional optical uh, microscope. So this is a typical comparison of the TAM uh, with the uh, typical uh, SEM and optical microscope. So uh, with the TEM, uh, we can go up to 0 0.2 nanometers. So this is very, very small as compared to the 2 nanometer for a uh, typical SEM. And for a typical optical microscope, with the help of which we can go only up to uh, 0.2 uh, micrometers. So images, uh, our imaging and the TAM must be uh, carried out under the vacuum and there is a reason for the vacuum. Why the vacuum? Uh, because the electrons cannot travel through air or uh, if we do not have the vacuum, so we cannot get the desired applications from the electrons uh, which we use inside the tube uh, and are inside the chamber of the uh, transmission electron microscope. So the basic components of the terms are illustrated on uh, the next slide, uh, I mean in the coming slide. So first of all, uh, we should also uh, need to differentiate between the units. Uh, here we mentioned NM, so by NM we mean uh, nanometers. So one nanometer uh, uh, is basically equal to 10 to the power minus nine meters. And micrometers, so what is mean by micrometer? So micrometers, one micrometers mean 10 to the power uh, minus 6 uh, meters. So let's come towards the component of the TEM. So here you can see uh, in this figure you see different parts of the uh, uh, transmission electron microscope. So the first part or the first section or the topmost section of the transmission electron microscope consists of the electron gun. So what actually do? So transmission electrons gun is basically uh, emit uh, electrons and these electrons after the emissions, uh, how it's been emitted, I mean we applied the voltage to the uh, electron uh, gun, which is normally, uh, I mean tungsten or uh, lanthanum hexaboride crystal. So we supplied a high voltage uh, uh, when we heat it with the help of high voltage, so it emits the electron. Uh, so after the emission, the electrons, uh, they are accelerated uh, toward the specimens and uh, for the acceleration, we applied a high voltage, uh, that voltage range uh, uh, from 80 to 200 kilo electron volt. And with the help of this uh, voltage, uh, we basically accelerate the electron uh, toward uh, the specimens. So after that, 
uh, the next part after the electron guns uh, they uh, consist of the condenser lenses. So the role of the condenser lenses is to focus the beam onto the specimens uh, which uh, is introduced into the microscope uh, through uh, the airlock. So here is the airlock. With the help of this airlock, uh, we introduce specimens. So uh, when uh, this is, uh, I mean, the, uh, the air, after the airlock, uh, when we put the uh, specimen, so then the vacuum, the desired vacuum is uh, produced inside uh, this chamber or this tube. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the condenser role is uh, the focusing of the electron beam on the uh, specimen. So after that, the next portion is the objective lenses. So the role of the objective lenses is uh, they, they, they form a focus image. Uh, which is then enlarged by uh, the projector lenses uh, that we have uh, below. So the first part, uh, I mean the topmost part is the electron gun which emits the electrons uh, with the help of the applied voltage. Uh, then we have the condenser lenses. The role of the condenser lenses is to focus the electron and the specimens. And then the objective lenses is to form a focus image uh, which is then enlarged by the uh, projector lenses. So the image is viewed on the fluorescent screen or a computer's uh, monitor. So the projector lenses, they form the image and which is then viewed on the fluorescent screen or uh, with the help of a, a computer uh, monitor that is being linked with the system. So the electron source, uh, just like we mentioned on the previous uh, slide, so most of the transmission electron microscope uh, uh, uses lanthanum hexaboride crystals uh, as a filament or uh, as a source of the uh, electron. So it consists of a small uh, crystals of lanthanum hexaboride that you can see it here uh, with a pointed tap uh, and that is being supported between the two electrodes. So these are the two electrodes uh, which support here the small crystal of lanthanum hexaboride. Uh, which act as a uh, crest, uh, which act as a source for the electron. So, what happened? What is the procedure for the emission of the electron? So, the procedure is like that: uh, a current is passed through the crystals, uh, and electrons are emitted. I mean, uh, with the passage of the electronic current through the crystal, it starts emitting the electron. So, lanthanum hexaboride is used, and there is uh, the reason for it. Uh, what are the reasons for using the uh, lanthanum hexaboride? Uh, I mean, it's been utilized uh, as an electron source because it has a lower functions. Uh, what what it mean by the lower functions? Uh, it's mean that uh, the yields of the electron is high uh, when, we, when we are using lanthanum hexaboride as a uh, electron source. And uh, another reason is that it produces electron with a narrow spread of energy. So it produces a narrow uh, uh, narrow spread of energies. Uh, it produce electron with a narrow spread of energy and uh, with a lower function. So these are the two main characteristics because of which we are using lanthanum hexaboride uh, instead of other sources for uh, the electron. So accelerating voltage, uh, you know that electrons being emitted by the filament uh, which are being accelerated by uh, a series of voltage. So for transmission electron microscopy, accelerating voltage typically range from uh, 60 kilo electron, 60 kilo volt to uh, 200 kilo volt, and so uh, it's depend upon the uh, the type of the the sample or the specimens we which you want to analyze, or you can say that depend upon the nature of the applications that you want to get from the transmission electron microscope are the type of the sample you want to analyze uh, uh, inside transmission electron microscope. So higher accelerating voltage give higher resolutions but uh, le uh, less contrast. I mean if you are getting, you want to get the high resolution, so be remember uh, in that you will lose the contrast. So high resolution is possible uh, with the help of the high voltage but it has one drawback that with that you can get uh, less uh, contrast. So high accelerating voltage can also result in specimen damage. Uh, so for these reasons, a study of biological sample and, uh, tends to imply low accelerating voltage uh, that is from 60 kilovolt to 100 kilovolt. I mean high accelerating voltage on one side it gives uh, uh, high resolutions but it has some disadvantages. Uh, one disadvantage is that uh, the contrast is less 
and the second disadvantage is that it can damage the sample. So that's why for the study of the biological sample inside the TAM, uh, we applied uh, low voltage. That is, uh, 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 that is the voltage in the range of 60 uh, to 100 uh, kV uh, is being utilized uh, for the analysis of the biological sample inside the TAM. While studying of inorganic materials, uh, which often require high resolutions, so uh, for that purpose, uh, we normally apply an accelerating voltage of up to 200 uh, kV. So high voltage is being applied for uh, an organic sample, and for the organic samples, uh, we normally apply the voltage, the maximum voltage up to uh, 100 kV. And the reason we mentioned that if we apply the high voltage or high accelerating voltage, so it is possible that the specimens might be uh, damaged. So in order to protect our sample or uh, our specimens inside the TAM, uh, so uh, we normally deal, uh, we normally apply uh, the lower accelerating uh, voltage. Uh, electromagnetic lenses are, are, one may ask the question that what is, uh, what are the roles of the uh, uh, electromagnetic lenses? Uh, so. Uh, Electromagnetic lenses, uh, they, are, they are being uh, applied for uh, focusing of the electron beam. Uh, so all the modern TAMS uses electromagnetic uh, lenses for that particular purpose. So uh, what, uh, what actually the material from which they are being made. So be remember, these electromagnetic lenses, they are different from the optical lenses or from the glass lenses uh, because their role is different. Uh, they are being used for a different purpose. Their role is uh, being the focusing of the electron. So we remember they, they, uh, these lenses, they consist of a coil of copper wire inside the iron uh, foil. So uh, their application is to produce the magnetic, uh, uh, the magnetic field uh, with the help of the applied uh, current. So uh, the, the, as produced uh, a magnetic field, you can see with the help of these uh, red line. So they are being uh, utilized to symbolize uh, what to symbolize the S produced uh, magnetic field. So electron close to the center uh, are less strongly deflected by uh, uh, by these field than those passing through uh, the lens far from the uh, axis. So this is the the, tap, the typical role of the uh, magnetic lenses. They are being uh, utilized inside the tank. So one may ask the question that why we are not utilizing the glass lenses or of the optical lenses? So because classical, uh, the glass lenses they cannot electron to pass. Uh, so that's why we are utilizing the electromagnetic uh, lenses. So uh, uh, that is, I mean, we also, uh, I mean, explain the purpose of the electromagnetic uh, lenses. Then uh, uh, the other important portions, the other important part of the transmission electron microscope. Uh, that is very important uh, is uh, consist of the uh, apertures. So we have three types of the apertures, uh, which just like you can see it here. The first aperture is the condenser. Uh, the second is objective uh, objective apertures and uh, selected area aperture. So here you can see all these apertures. So what are the roles of these apertures? So the first aperture you can see at the top. Uh, it says the condenser aperture. So the condenser aperture uh, controls uh, the fractions of the beam which is allowed to hit the specimens. Uh, it therefore helps to control the intensity of illuminations. Then we have the, uh, the objective apertures. So the objective aperture is used uh, to select which beam and the diffraction pattern contribute to the image, uh, thus produce, uh, producing diffraction uh, contrast. So, but that uh, that uh, we we have to analyze uh, the diffraction contrast in the uh, in the coming lectures. Uh, that about the diffraction contrast and the uh, transmission electron microscopy. The selected area aperture, uh, which you can see it here, uh, is used to select uh, is used to a selected uh, regions of the specimens from which a diffraction pattern is obtained. I mean, this is uh, this area. Uh, this person normally uh, is act uh, uh, the role of being selecting the area of a specimens. I uh, mean, which need to be uh, diffracted. So these are the uh, different aperture inside the TAM, and also it specify we specify the roles of the 
uh, the different uh, aperture. So that's all we have for this lecture. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, but stay tuned with the next lecture because in that lecture we will deal with the diffraction contrast and the uh, chem. So that will be part uh, number second of this lecture series. So stay tuned with the next lecture. Till then, bye bye.